Like a moth to a flame, it pulls the same. Next thing we know, we're in a now bear's den. Tomorrow, I know it all begins again. But where we're needed, we will go. And I'll go. And welcome to Heroes of the Plains. We were just actively reflecting on how bitterly old almost all of us are. And uh, <laughs> half of us are very, very old, and the other half had no idea what we were talking about. <laughs> um, thank you for uh, joining us here for our game. Uh, before we dive into it, a couple things we have to say. Thank you to Idle Champions, of course. Uh, they have the code, should be appearing in chat. Uh, thank you to Tailspire. We are still giving away a set of uh, five codes so the Dean Dungeon Master and four players can play. And I'm sure Megan is very quick on the draw. The drawing is already there in chat for you to get your Tailspire codes. Uh, as a personal aside, the new Lambert House shirts are out new uniforms you know very near and dear to my heart there so uh check those out too to uh, support lambert house uh and before we get down into whatever todd has in mind for us because uh last time we were at the mall uh let's just find out uh, who are you beautiful people so we will start with uh hope now Barker. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha uh, um hi i'm hope lavelle <laughs> you can follow me on twitter at the hope lavelle to keep up with all the D, D stuff that i like to do or talk about um i am a motion capture performer by day D, D enthusiast by night and day and uh yeah uh that's it that's me and friend to dragons and gods let's yeah, not that's leave true i made friends with tiamat that Yay. is true that D &D is true. enthusiast is my favorite thing like <laughs> you said that for a few weeks and i'm like yes yep yes. uh lauren Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content coordinator over at Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms, and I'm old. <laughs> it's we just a fact. It's really just a fact. I have a Zune. <laughs> Age ain't nothing again, but a number. <laughs> again, half the people in chat are like, a what? Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, don't Google it. Don't even, just don't even, don't even. Don't even you know maybe there was a maybe there was a mention of burning cds and we were like none of us have cd players like that's <laughs> not yeah never i mind. miss my mixtapes they got stolen out of my car i used and to have the other half oh, we don't that burn to too. cds literally <laughs> i i also had my mixtapes ganked too but you know what now the internet's our mixtape <laughs> um uh hmm? i just want to know if the same person stole all three of our mixtapes i think so <laughs> that must True. be also yeah yeah the, they also got like a massive collection of musical theater no oh, like a lifetime of Lord. yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> and i well, fully expect a musical for the next guardians movie <laughs> <laughs> well you know what hey jen let's let's keep it rolling we'll, we'll come to you I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on Twitter as at DreamWisp. You can find me on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. Um, I play a bunch of games. I write a bunch of stuff. Um, we're not the authors on Handle Keep Mysteries. Um, I have a bunch of really exciting stuff uh, coming out tomorrow. There's a really fun vampire game I played in. It'll be on YouTube now for extra credits. Um, check it out. It was one of the most fun games I have ever played. Uh, we're all really proud of it. So um, it'll be on the extra credits YouTube channel tomorrow. Uh, and then some other cool stuff soon. Awesome. Oh, and dice. Um, you can pick up uh, the dice I designed on Die Hard Dice with the code DreamWiz. You can get 15% off. Uh, they're awesome. They're beautiful. I love them. I'm done. You're also awesome beautiful. <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> Megan? Hello, everyone. I'm Megan Kenrick, and I had a the original iPod and then the iPod Shuffle, which I thought was super cutting edge. And I'm just curious when when they're gonna change the floppy disk to be the like the standard save button because most kids nowadays don't even know what that is. 
they they they, they only they know, know it as, as a save, save button. button. Oh, you still yeah. have one, Jen. <laughs> right. The same reason as the like call button on a phone too. They're like, uh, you hear yeah. those stories about they see three and a half inch discs, and they're like, why did you three D print a save button? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, All true. Yeah. So you can find me here uh, for uh, yeah uh, every Tuesday at six p.m. Um, and you can also find me on Todd Kenrick's YouTube channel where we talk about a bunch of D and D stuff. Um, and we just wrapped up Idol Champions Presents Two, where we killed Tiamat. I did not think that was going to happen, but it was epic, and there was like fifteen people playing. If you have not seen that, please go check it out. Also, um, Whittle is the newest champion that you can unlock in Idol Champions. So go get her because she's fast as heck. That is true. That is true. You can have us all. We can all be in your formation now. You can play the home game of, uh, of Heroes of the Plains. Uh, me, B. Dave Walters, you already know what I do. I do this <laughs> in a lot of places. Uh, but I'm actually going to turn it over to Adam even before we turn it over to Todd because Adam's got an announcement for us. Yeah, we've got an announcement today. So I am Adam Bradford. I'm the CDO at Demiplane and um, have some news that we need to share with all of our fans out there. And this is probably something that if you know about Dungeons & Dragons, uh, you probably have been thinking is a real possibility for the last several weeks, but we have reached 20th level and that does mean that our current campaign with these characters is coming to an end. And uh, so I, I wanted to share that with everybody when I joined Demiplane, I think back in February. So uh, hasn't even been a year yet. Uh, one of the first things that uh, we talked about when we started thinking about content that we were going to do for Demiplane and, and really just starting to engage with the uh, tabletop role-playing space out there and, and with the community and fans was uh, this, uh, you know, what if we brought the band back together concept? And so uh, it's something that we have been able to do. Uh, these characters that we have played uh, for three years at this point together in some capacity, uh, it has been just truly an incredible experience. Many people don't get to play a campaign from first to 20th level in their entire gaming lives, much less be able to do it on stream where people get to watch and people get to engage and, uh, and all of those things. And so we are just so very fortunate that uh, we've been able to do this. Uh, this. This show has meant a lot for Demiplane. I am so appreciative to Todd for, for running this and, and for, for the, the, the cast for doing such an incredible job. So uh, we are drawing this campaign to a close uh, to let everybody know tonight is the penultimate play episode. So that means that uh, we think that there's one more episode after this one. So on December the 7th, next week, that is when this uh, wonderful campaign is going to be coming to a close. And then I want to make sure that everyone knows that we will have an episode the week after that, which is December the 14th. And we are going to have a, uh, you know, campaign reflection, uh, you know, post campaign wrap up. Cryfest, just say it. Yeah, Cryfest, yeah. Cryfest, maybe. Yep. Um, and and so a time for everybody to come together and uh, reflect on the campaign and uh, you know talk about favorite parts of it, and also a time for you out there who have been uh, viewers. It's we just appreciate it so much uh, for you to be along on this adventure with us, for you to be able to ask questions of the cast and get those uh, questions answered. So um, again, to let everybody know. Uh, tonight is our, our second from last episode, but we will be closing out the campaign next week on December 7th. And then we will be having a campaign, uh, you know, looking back at the campaign episode on December 14th, which will be our last episode before the holiday break. So we're going to, uh, you know, take, take some time off uh, through uh, the new year and uh, just where everybody is aware there is going to be you know next steps for what's going to happen uh you know for for this show and in this time slot and so we will share more details about that when we return from the holidays uh, but uh, we're really really excited to close this out and to fin be able to have just this wonderful opportunity to finish out this story in such a strong way with these characters that have come to mean so much to us so uh Thank you all again for being on this journey with us. And then now for the second to last time for this campaign, I'm going to turn it over to you, Todd. 
Oh, that's intense. Um, all right. I'm Todd Kenrick, and I am, I, if you, you know D&D, you know me. Oh, I hope. No, that sounds worse. If you know me, you know D&D. That's the reverse. Anyways, uh, I am up to D&D stuff all the time. I'm a giant fan of it, and I'm really thankful to get to, to close out this campaign that we started three years ago. So, uh, all right, let's go ahead and do the thing. So, three days or so have passed since you were somehow whisked away to a mall uh, and, and played a game with Briv. And at this moment, uh, we are in Waterdeep, or Kara Eldrex is by herself. Or Kara, you see, you look around you and you see a vast wasteland of what used to be Waterdeep. Several of the walking statues broken to pieces, arms and legs from those statues sticking out, out of the rubble, and you are completely surrounded in ash. The ocean itself is still gray from so much ash washing up on the shore of what once was the city of Waterdeep that was destroyed by the Phoenix. And you are here alone. And you hear no birds, no laughter. There is no life here. She's been standing for a while and she reaches into her bag and starts pulling out some objects. Um, there are a bunch of things that are by design unimportant. It's a mask, a porcelain mask made for a dragonborn face, a, a stuffed beholder with eye stalks that seem to follow, a little mood ring, a, a collapsible... 10 foot pole that she holds on to and then opens and closes again. And a chunk of an accordion with BFGs scratched into it. She kind of lays it all out. I'm going to try to fix this, but this might take a while. And it was unfair to all of you and to me to not say goodbye until it was time to say hello again. So thank you. I am going to try to fix this. I can't fix it all. I miss you all. And she stands for a while. She cries a little bit, starts putting the stuff away. Is Storm Herald nearby? Where is Storm Herald right now? I expect it's somewhere in the Prime Material Plane, unless everyone wants it to be somewhere else. So, um, unless well, you'd like to park, you you do occasionally park it in the, the Frostfell, which I know you are not a fan of. That's because I don't have a choice of where it gets parked sometimes. Um, I, I would imagine she, it's probably nearby, but not within flying distance. So she knows she's got a yeah. word of recall back. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, she'll stand and she'll, she's got some of the dust on her hands and she just nods. And then in Draconic, she says, um, I'm in Rakabai, Shabonim, Vedouktalut. I'll be back. Home. She casts a word of recall and goes back to Storm Herald. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Sorry. I wanted to. Uh, Take a, a stop. I appreciate you letting me do that. I just, I've been putting that off for way too long, you know. Hey, Arki, are you okay? No, but I will be, and I'm a little better now, so thanks. Is um, there anything we can do to help? I, you just did. Wait, did we stop? Where are we? I don't know. I just uh, used magic to get back here, so I haven't Looked out a window yet. Where are we? You are... You decided that you didn't necessarily be, want to be next to any of the cities. It's, in the last few days, it has become apparent that many of the cities um, decided to uh, opt in for aid from the devils to protect their city in the near future. 
Um, you don't know where the alliance, the allegiances are or are not amongst many cities across the prim primaterial plain. So you are over a mountainside right now and just where very far from any population. Um, freely, <clears throat> you're dreaming and you wake up and you're back in the cell. And you see Asmodeus. Okay, okay, all right, hang on. I beat you, we beat Tiamat, we beat you. I, uh, okay, all right, you know, I gotta be somewhere in just a few days, man, okay? So let's go ahead and get to this. And <laughs> I just reach for my weapon. Oh, no, no, really, I, yeah, uh, let's do it again. Let's, you're never going to leave, you, you never left. I, I thought it would be nice if you had a nice break. Yeah, if I you know. You can just yeah. dream about something nice for a change. You wished that we would thought we won. No, I heard you. And you know when I heard you? When? When you were dying at the hands of me and my friends. So I cast my circle of power. <laughs> <laughs> you you cast circle of power. And as Modi's just kind of melts into the form of Penelope. How can you be sure which one's the real one? And you wake up. I, I just look at the ceiling for a second and I say, that's why I carry two blades. <laughs> <laughs> or Kira, did you, did you hear yelling? And um, Whittle's going to run over to wherever she heard Freely yelling and enter the room and ask him if he's okay. Hey, Freely, you okay? It sounded like someone was attacking you. Uh... No, it was it was the dream again. Again. All right, that's it. Whittle's going to go to her lab and grab a hammer and destroy the holding cell. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. No, that thing came in handy. No, no, it's not the... Are there any more not... gods you want to trap in here? Any more nightmares no, we, you want to have? We didn't think we were going to trap that god in there. Like, no, it's like, it, it's been very useful. I mean, we didn't even think about dropping Tiamat in there. She was just like the size of a person. That might have worked. You know what? Um, that might have worked. Riv walks hmm. up at this point and, uh, you know, crosses the threshold uh, where Freely can see him. And uh, he basically unties the uh, the little cinch on his loincloth and it all just drops. Oh, no. And and Briv just kind of, you know, kind of relaxes for a second. And uh, and then he, uh, you know, kind of kind of prances around. And then uh, he, he's just trying to get some kind of reaction out of Freely. I go look for Penelope. <laughs> I, I am trying to supplant thine dreams. I shall give thee new nightmares. Oh, that's that's something I cannot unsee there, buddy. Yeah, no, thanks. Uh, well, perhaps next time thou wilt dream of mine chiseled physique instead just, of the horrors that thou didst endure under the hand of Asmodeus. Just the next person that mentions a grinding tree is getting a smite. That's all I have to say. That's uh, that, no, that's uh, no. Uh, right. Flo, Flo the Flump, who, who now has been untethered from Briv, <laughs> just kind of comes out. We'll, we'll talk about this and just does an, a minor illusion around his swimsuit area, just blur it out. <laughs> Censored bar. For a split second, the green flame lights up because I just thought it was Sir Bigglesworth. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, it's Flo. Flo, Flo's fine. Flo's fine. It's just Flo. Flo's, Flo's Flo fine. Flo alone. <laughs> about this forever. Uh, yeah, Griff, probably. Griff bends over, probably. Oh, oh, uh, oh, oh, oh no. The, the illusions oh, don't move. Illusion. Oh, oh, and oh, grabs the loin cloth and, and repositions the Whittle, loin. Whittle just drops like a wall of force between <laughs> Briv and everyone. Just, I appreciate he's trying the to help. joke is on thee wall of force is transparent <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he means well he means well hey he, def, he definitely has blotted out whatever i was thinking about yeah. when Br Br Briv leans over to grab the loincloth and the wall of force goes up his butt cheeks hit the wall of force and just oh. <laughs> <laughs> two flat two flat things <laughs> Of his butt off. Against... May I ask you a few questions? <laughs> <laughs> Just I kind thought... of a squeaking noise. 
I fought, I fought so hard. I fought for 300 years to get back to you guys. And, and this, this is what, why, why even did it? You know what? No, I'm trying that. to help thee. No, it's working. Thank you very much. Well, Please stop helping. Good morning, Freely. Welcome to the peep show. <laughs> it, 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 really it, don't tell them that it works because then they'll just keep doing it every morning. <laughs> I mean, I felt like if I told him it didn't work, he'd just try harder. Oh yeah. Wait, I just, I do go look for Penelope though. Where is Penelope right now? Um, where's Orkira? Did Orkira join everybody? Um, yeah, I probably would have followed Whittle, although not nearly as fast for obvious reasons, because, wait, someone's yelling? And so, yeah. So I'm probably down with everybody leaving the cell with uh, filled with uh, Briv's butt, I guess. Okay. Um, Penelope's in the kitchen. She's attempting to bake cookies. Aww. If I find her in the kitchen, I come in and I just like drop like an armload of um, calendars and um, uh, parchments that I've borrowed from Alindra and like spread spread it open. And there's one that has like in crayon a big like circle drawn over one of the one of the months. And I'm like, okay, okay, so. These calendars don't don't make any make any sense to me. I don't know calendar of Harptos. I don't even know who Harptos is, but that's fine. Um, so apparently we're we're in Kythorn, which is the the time of flowers, and and the the wedding day is right here. And he just like pokes right in the middle of the map. It's 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 they call it a solstice, um, which huh? is the lo the longest day of the year. A solstice. That yeah yeah that word yeah mm hmm. Really? That's so thoughtful. You, you thought of everything. That's such a perfect day. I, you know, I just felt like the sun should shine on you for as long as possible. No. <laughs> but you know what else that means? What? And he just sort of runs his finger along the map or along the calendar. And he's like, we got like this many days that we could still do stuff before the wedding day because i feel like we should probably stop fighting like like two two days two 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 days three days yeah yeah, yeah, yeah give or yeah. take right yeah so that i mean that leaves us like four days where we could still go do some hero and, and again i don't know how much is left but um we have let me see um there's still like demons and devils everywhere uh so we you know we could go we could go clean up some of that stuff uh, uh water deep is apparently still ashes not sure how to fix that but realistically i never am we just sort of like make it work um uh, uh we we uh uh i don't know what you want to do well i want you to try these cookies i made immediately just uh, they're probably way too hot so it's like they... oh, wonderful <laughs> oh, wonderful oh, wonderful uh -huh. uh, okay. i know i made I them know out of mud they're mud cookies I was not asked what we should do next. Oh, does he have clothes on? I very much cover Penelope's eyes. Wait, did you I, put on clothes back on yet? There is much betwixt oh. mine thighs and over mine <laughs> biceps and mine quadriceps and my uh, some other kinds of sets. Uh, but no one asked me, I shall still offer mine opinion, that I believe that the places where people have elected to choose devils as their leaders, they should learn their lesson and just get wrecked to some degree. Because I have seen in many situations when people choose poor leadership for themselves, it creates disastrous consequences. And even if we do try to intervene, it doesn't actually do much good because the people are still going to want whatever that evil thing is leading them. I mean, get wrecked is valid, but I don't, uh, that's not really our way though. Like, I'm well, okay, all right. So if we're not gonna help the people that like chose it, I mean, that's debatable because if you choose under duress, have you chosen? Uh, what about the people that haven't chosen? Is there anybody that's still fighting? Cause we got like, and I point at the calendar, we got like four, five, five, four, Days. Anyone who wants to stand up against it, we shall fight beside them. I'm simply saying that if someone invites that kind of disaster, then I'm not sure that we have time in four days to fix that problem. 
I mean, we get a lot done. Maybe we should ask Alindra where we should go because we could do. Has South anyone Island seen today. my calendars? As, oh, oh, <laughs> uh, oh, oh, cookies. Yeah, yeah, cookies. Oh, Not hot. Oh, hot cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Press digitation, cool it off a little. Oh, cookies. Um, I came at just the right time. Um, Penelope, are you sure you used sugar, not salt? I use all natural ingredients. So the meat gross. Or here is just um, putting the, the, the piping hot cookies right into her muzzle. It's just like, oh, these are pretty good. Are, they, are you like experimenting for wedding hors d'oeuvres or something? I just wanted to make cookies for all of my friends to show you how much I appreciate you guys. I normally do not eat cookies because I save all my stomach room for meat. But in this circumstance, because of the grand gesture that thou hast made, I shall stomach it. Thank you. Megan, check your uh, DMs. Um, at this exact moment, also, a little spark of yellow lightning from a wild magic surge strikes Whittle and the entire... All your friends glow blue. Suddenly you can see, you can detect all magic within 60 feet of you. And it's very painful for your vampiric eyes. And you all notice that Will is considerably, considerably paler and getting paler every single day. And her fangs are getting longer as well. Um, and now, and now you, you're overwhelmed by all the light coming off of all your friends from all the weird magical items they have on them as well as the magical spells that they have cast on themselves as well as Storm Herald. You just kind of detect all the magic around you. You all are, you all are so magical. You're, you're radiant. It's painful almost. She's just going to take a step back. But before she takes a step back, she's going to grab a cookie and try really hard to keep it down. Not because she doesn't like the taste, but because... Her taste for blood has worsened exponentially over the last day. I um, I pull my brand new Holy Avenger just slightly out of the sheath, and I turn on the light so the light glows, and I see if it bothers her. It bothers you. Oh, God. Uh, put it, oh, put it out. Oh, oh, uh, okay, oh. okay. Oh, um, uh, or, or Kira, um... We might have a situation. Yeah, the situation is the thing that we should spend some time working on is um, how to either fix this or spend time with Whittle before she's got to go do her thing. Because Wait. I can't fix this. I can only destroy. This. I can fix this. I take out the scroll of true resurrection. Yeah, I don't know that that's how that works, though, because, I mean, she's here. You can't, like, bring her back. She's here. Well, if she's dead or undead, this should, it should, I, I believe. But why didn't we, why didn't we try that against Strahd? If that's all we had to do was bring him back? I they have to be willing, correct? Oh. There's, yeah, um, although Strahd might have been, I don't know. But more importantly, the, the, I don't know if, fixing the vampirism is going to stop her from becoming uh, Whittle, your deal is that you're going to become a dark lord, right? Yeah, I, I, I sort of made a deal. So I don't, I don't know if it matters if the true resurrection works on me or not, because I've kind of promised my soul. Yeah. Uh, also, um, you've been spending an awful lot of time with that weird book that gives me like a really creepy vibe every time I see it. <laughs> Why does it give you a creepy vibe? It's not evil at all. Uh, same reason my sword's giving you a creepy vibe, Whittle. Oh. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> you know, but, I've, been, I've, been, I've, been, I've been thinking about returning it, but it, it's a good read. Uh, yeah, you know, you, um, you do all notice at this moment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, give me an arcana check from Alindra and uh, everybody. Just... <laughs> The theoretically, both Penelope and Whittle have new books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and and if I know what book you're talking about, a bunch of us have seen this book. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Whittle's really been got reading a dirty it. 20. My boy finally <laughs> like knew something. Wow. You see the book of vile darkness, and that's what <laughs> Whittle has actively been <laughs> reading through. <laughs> Did you get that from? Becoming a Where didst thou get all of this stuff? 
I feel like there was a shopping trip that I was not a part of. No, we oh. went on this big adventure to save this forest, and then we go like a like a like a, like a lava, and then like the. And where was I? No, you were on the other side of the mountain. Like, I mean, you know, like you guys were doing. What were you doing? We were fighting Tiamat. I couldn't find you guys. I looked everywhere. Uh, did you try the group chat? Did you try? I feel the... that that did not happen. It did. Look, I got this book of exalted deeds. Oh, what? Hey, wait. Are we in the book? Did you look? Did you see? Are we in the book? Yeah, there's like pictures of all of us doing deeds. <sighs> Briv, 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 wait, deeds. wait, wait. Let's see if Good you're in the book. Let's see. Let's see if Briv's in the book. Let's see if Briv's in the book. It's exalted, of course, I'm in the book. It's not. We don't have to see me. Uh, what what As, page are you? <laughs> As they all crowd around Penelope's right. book, I'm going to walk up to Whittle and really quietly say, so you got that from your Dark Lord friends? or?" Uh, no, I, actually, um, I got it from the Dark Lady. Her name's Tiamat. And uh, she made a really compelling argument and kind of convinced me that, that I should take it. And she, she seemed like she was pretty trustworthy, but... You know, we ended up killing her, and the book is still pretty good. And I am finding it finding it really hard to put it down. You know, and I don't I don't know why. And I'm like really possessive over it. And I'm pretty. Are you all getting jealous of my book? No, I'm worried because no, it has no pictures. Time I saw that book, um, it gave Penelope horns. Oh, I remember that. I know, if thou dost mess with Penelope, thou dost get the horns. Or, or, that is, that is no, true. Yeah, yeah. And so anything that could um, make Penelope uh, change, I get a little nervous about. Um, hey, I, mean, I gotta ask you. I gotta ask. I gotta ask. I'm just gonna ask. We're all really worried about you. Do you actually want us to stop you from being a Dark Lord? Because if you want, if you want to go do the thing, like, I'm not one to stand in, the in your way. way. Of dreams. Yeah. I... So a couple of things. I've already promised my soul, and I don't. I don't think there's any coming back from that. And I'm I also want to help. The, all the time. I I want to. I actually want to help the people of Barovia. It's not that I want to be the lord of anything. I don't like rules. I don't like ruling. It seems like a lot of responsibility. But the people of Barovia and anyone who lives in Castle Ravenloft is just doing the same thing day in and day out. So if there's something I can do to make their damned eternity a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun, then, you know, I'm going to figure it out. But also, I'm pretty resourceful, and I'm pretty sure I can figure out how to get out. Uh, Freely would actually unhook the Holy Avenger from his belt completely and actually just hand it to Penelope (laughs) and then walk over and hug Whittle and just be like, okay, so I... You got into this mess because of me, and and I'll do anything I can to get you out of it. But 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 they're all right if you if you, I mean if you at least want to try it. I mean okay, and just let us know if you need saving. I guess. And listen, if thou dost get too evil, we shall just slay thee and well, move on because I mean, it's what we do. Like, I mean, no, but I mean, we honestly. got like we got like lots of other people we could slay. Briv, we don't have. I'm to just slay. saying. At one point, we will get to her spot on the list. If she does turn evil. Um, you know what would help with the not turning evil? Because Whittle, I think you're awesome and you could definitely do all the things you're talking about. But that book is going to make it hard for you to not want to snack on everybody in Barovia. I'm just going to say it. Really? Sometimes yeah. I want to do that. It gave Penelope horns. Well, but I've seen Penelope turn into all kinds of stuff. I've seen her have horns. I've seen her have fins. I've seen her have wings. Yeah, yeah. This wasn't one of those fun um, Penelope These ad- fun homes. These no, were... no. Hey, uh, but but, but uh, uh, look, 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 look. Okay, wait. The 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 soul assist dice is in like a week, so we still got some time. Solstice. Sol- Solstice. Sol- Solstice. That's, that's how the Penelope e is it. silent. But then why is Correct. it there? Because it um, modifies the the C, so you get the different phoneme we got some time to do some hero stuff and apparently we don't have time for whittle and maybe we can't save like all the worlds but like we could do like something this could be like this could be like our bachelor rhetoric party where we like go do a thing that's fun before we like settle down and strippers 
as long as, long as they that was you. Yeah, yeah, no, you already nope, did nope. the stripper thing. Nope, veto. Oh, yeah, I hard, missed hard it. Pass. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> you did L.C. Abram pull his skin clean off. It's true. I, yeah. No. I know During what you all can do. I know what Didn't you all that. can do to help me. Um, You're going to have to pry it out of my hands, though. Oh. If we could, like, find a volcano to throw the book into. <laughs> I watched oh, a documentary like that. That was I the mean, day the strength where... of men failed. Some dude <laughs> named Isildur, like, really oh, fumbled yeah, right like, at the end. But his there finger like, clean there off. There were, like, 11 different endings to it as well. Yeah. Fade to white. Epilogue after epilogue Fade after epilogue. After epilogue. But oh, is that what's going to happen to us, though? I thought maybe possibly. we just have, like, a clean ending where we're just, like, it's over. It just... It's just like end of the I hour. Mean, we thought that it. happened several times to us in the past. We keep resetting whole realities, though. True. Uh, can time. we agree that we're not going to reset reality this time? I mean, should we reset reality? Because Asmodeus did a lot of damage. No, I, nope. I'll leave all options on the table. I would but rather. Really? Well, if there's a path that seems to be the best course of action. Well, but if we reset time again, then he comes back again, and then we got to mess him up again, and then Tiamat comes back again, and that, that was a lot of work bringing was down there, Tiamat. If there was an inciting incident prior, because he was locked away for so long, if there was something prior that was something small that we could undo that would prevent all of the incidents. Wait, also was I thought that thou didst say that thou dost not like wishing, so how are we supposed to do this? Don't like wishing. How distracted is Whittle by this conversation right now? <laughs> That's up to Whittle. <laughs> Whittle's still thinking about her book. <laughs> okay, but you're not necessarily looking um, at anything in specific, or or maybe me. <laughs> <laughs> I no am definitely looking at you. <laughs> okay, all right. I because Whittle, that... Whittle is still concerned about Okira because it seemed like Okira came back pretty pretty upset so well, keep yeah, an eye on her you know uh, a lot of people she cares about died so that's the yeah. thing but she's concerned about you at the moment she locks eyes with you and kind of gives like a sympathetic nod like oh yeah you know i can see that you're worried about me and i'm worried about you and she walks over and puts her hand her arm around your shoulders and is going to give you a hug and then cast her move curse so that she stops being attuned to the book of vile darkness <laughs> Okay. Thank you for that, Akira. Well, let's that see if it works first. <laughs> <laughs> well, Whittle it just works. thinks right now you're giving her a hug. Yeah. She is. She's absolutely. But you know what? Why? Why not both? Uh, and this is what she had to do the last time to uh, get Penelope to stop being attuned to it. So. You never told me that you had Whittle's book before. <laughs> you. There are. How much is okay? First off, how much did Whittle write in this book? And I am aware that Whittle, her, her, you are faster. <laughs> so I imagine you've written quite a bit in this book at this point. So what's in the book now? There may be a few pages. Okay. What kind of stuff did you write? Uh, one page describes how Whittle made a deal with the Dark Powers and how if she dies while attuned to this book her soul cannot be kept or imprisoned because she's attuned by that book as it is it belongs to Ravenloft so the attunement to the book like it's it's not going to keep her imprisoned if she dies while attuned to the book basically you, the remove curse uh, give me a second at it your touch, work. all curses affecting one creature or object end. If the object yeah. is a curse magic item, its curse remains, but the spell breaks its owner's attunement to the op to the object so it can be removed or discarded. Yeah, you you no longer feel like you need to hold on to the book. However, it is very sticky now on you. Like it's like almost made out of like dried blood and tar. And just it's like you just dipped your hands in, in black cheese. Uh, I I would like to do something that may or may not actually be positive for Whittle, but freely doesn't know. Okay. I'm going to oh, hit and, uh, her. I hope you've got a message in Twitter. Yep. I'm going to hit her with uh, protection from good and evil. So if there's a moment that she seems like she hesitates with the Book of Vile Darkness, I hit her with uh, uh, protection from good and evil to see if that helps her at all. 
It does. It gives you, you get, not only does the rumor of curse, like you're no longer attuned to the book. You do kind of have it, uh, an itchy feeling for the book. There was lots of great things in the book, like people's true names. And you learned a lot about the shadow fell and all kinds of other things, but it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around, but the book wants you back. Well, I fireball the book. <laughs> Uh, all right. I'm, the... I'm gonna. Uh, my my arm is still around Whittle. I see her about to do a skull. fireball, and I'm just skull, gonna skull. open. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna open my wings and like help enclose it so nobody else gets in. It. Fireball just goes oh, around control. the kitchen, <laughs> and you skip the spell. All the cookies have been eaten at this point, I assume. And yes. yeah, the entire kitchen goes up in fire for for a moment. And while oh, this Penelope. is happening, Penelope's just cleaning up, and she's grabbing all the dishes, and she's just throwing them into the dishwasher hole <laughs> she's just while well, everyone's worried about whittle oh penelope you don't have to worry about cleaning anymore there it's done yeah and a, <laughs> clean, a clean plate comes out of the clean plate hole oh <laughs> okay cl clatters out immediately what magic is this that's prestidigitation i do you see me do that lots of times just boom just boom we have a prestidigitation hole and you kind of smell a weird smell coming from the dishwasher though Oh, I love weird smells. Let's and there's a little, is. there's a little bit of smoke and steam coming out of it because of the fireball. That's why thou dost love me so much, Penelope. <laughs> Can you smell? <laughs> yep, that's it. <laughs> Hi, Penelope. That's fine. Uh, Penelope's gonna investigate that. <laughs> okay, you do you open up the dishwasher? Oh yeah. You find Sir Biss a lot, eagerly <gasps> cleaning plates inside <laughs> on a little tiny little wheel, just scrubbing <laughs> plates. Ow. Hello. Well, look at you. I cleaned a plate. Thank you. I cleaned a plate for you. Plate. Oh, no. <laughs> the Dark Lord. <laughs> and you see this little gnomish squiddling Sir Biss a lot. Yeah. I I do. Do. The <laughs> architect of all your pain. <laughs> B Dave. Just no, B Dave. Dave. B Dave and Just B Dave. Lightning bolt. <laughs> I'm like, Sir Bisquilot. He's like, oh, heck. You should let him pull him to the dishwasher. Yeah, lightning bolt. It well, I suppose we found our battle for this week. <laughs> yeah. The dishwasher explodes as like Penelope is just barely missed by the lightning bolt and it goes through and you see oh. Sir Bissalot die from the lightning bolt. No! It's still stalked towards him like it's never enough, you know? <laughs> like, and then like, Sir, <laughs> Sir Bissalot splits in two and now and gets up and now there are two Sir Bissalots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no, it's him. <laughs> I just look at Whittle and I just point with the sword. I'm like, Whittle, what evil is this? You undo it, you undo it right now. It's really? family. It's family. It's no more evil than me. I mean, I'm totally not evil. It's it's Sophia's is familiar. It's Sir Bisswat. You remember? I intimately and must like, be destroyed. You've killed, you've killed Sir Bisswat so many times that he comes back every single time. And now there's two of them. Yeah, you created life. Yeah. This is not at all what I had in mind when I said that's what I wanted. Oh, uh, nope, nobody else is with me on the destroying this thing, huh? Because I, I, I mean, I will spend the rest of this week just dispatching Sir Bisquilots. This is Orgira is still standing over the Book of Vile Darkness trying to figure out what to do with it because she doesn't want to touch it. So she's just <laughs> standing there antsy, like, well, maybe, I, oh, no. If you had a 10 foot pole, I, I do thing. have a 10 foot pole, but I don't even want my 10 foot pole to touch that book. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, okay, uh, I, I, I could mage hand it and put it in Demi Flame. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the best thing. For the just time being. It. Yeah, yeah. Open yeah. the Demi Flame, seal mm -hmm. it up mm -hmm. since no one can go there. And, Put and, Sir, and I, I, when the demi plane opens, I may change Sir Bisquilot to the demi plane. No, <laughs> no, we don't no, want Sir Bisquilot the there with the book. Oh yeah, yeah no, that's worse. It's <laughs> created an evil. That's <laughs> that's a dread that domain. A whole other spinoff series. That's, that's that we found. <laughs> no, the you sequel. said it. Dread with <laughs> Sir you Bisquilot. You put Sir Bisquilot into I, the demi plane I, I, with the book of vile darkness. I need him to become an adversary worthy of me. <laughs> And time moves. I have late. done dishes. <laughs> <laughs> right now, there's a serpisola on the demi plane, hovering like Scarlet Witch, just 
using its tentacles, moving, reading all of the fiendish names, learning all the dark ways, all the horrible spells, 10th level spells. And he remembers, Sir Bissalot remembers the one man who hurt him. I wasn't afraid of Asmodeus. I wasn't afraid of Tiamat. I'm not afraid of him. Let's go, Sir Bissalot. <laughs> and for now, he's in a demiplane. But eventually, Sir Bissalot, after years and years, learns Cannot get out. the plane shift. <laughs> no, it, no, not, not out of this one. He finds the spell Wish. He finds 10th level spells. <laughs> he becomes attuned to the darkness of the Shadowfell itself and finds some of the truest names of the most awful fiends. I just appreciate that this whole thing was a long con Cthulhu origin story. Uh -huh. <laughs> And he has grown, grown powerful. But that is a story for another day. It's Cthulhu Fatagan. Yeah, yeah, Cthulhu Fatagan. Yep. Uh, yep. This is this Cthulhu. Closes. Well, I'm also, sure that's not going to have any consequences ever. No, nah, never. That's fine. I hate that thing. Yeah. Or Kara, I need you to roll. I, I, I do need a perception check. I know that your passive is high, but this is, this is something uniquely you. Okay. I'm very distracted by what's going on. So I rolled a dirty 20. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh you smell dragon coming from downstairs from kind of like the hang hangar bay of of storm herald uh, uh do i recognize a specific dragon do i you recognize smell red dragon ah oh, crap all right who invited the red dragon onto storm herald red dragon Red dragon. Whoa, whoa, red dragon. Again? Oh, okay. <laughs> Br Briff springs yeah, off. Uh, yep, well, I'm I, after him. Yep. Cult of the dragon. They're coming back. They want revenge. You know, I'm sorry, what? What's there, happening? I, I red dragon. We're going to kill it. All right, you yeah, all run downstairs. I, you know, <laughs> so, uh, boots of speed goes towards it. What just, did you say? Cult of, the, cult of the dragon? What? Very right. much like that that shoving thing with Briv in the hallway, like trying to get to it first. You know, only you're shoved, getting shoved into his kneecap. Hey, half the <laughs> mobility, I can move through the space occupied by another I creature. Shall win. I'm like, I am Mew. faster. <laughs> There's a lot of leapfrogging happening. Sorry, hey. Lauren, I think you're going to say something, and I accidentally talked over you. No, that's fine. Uh, you you all get down to kind of the, the the hangar bay where you've once you once parked you know a variety of ships including like uh, birds and animals that have helped you fly as well and there is under a tarp the red head of Tiamat just sitting out there tongue out and just kind Bird of a pool it. of dragon blood just dead. And there's a bunch of Whittle's gear everywhere and a really big bag of holding next to it that is also very bloody. So I, I look over it freely and, and Penelope and I say, were you expecting wedding gifts? It was supposed to be a wedding gift, but it was supposed to be cleaned up and like mounted to a wall by the time you saw it. Sorry to spoil the surprise. Oh. I... How did it get here? Happy wedding day. <laughs> I mean, even I know that that is a weird wedding gift. Uh, give me a second. And Whittle's going to stop time and like collect all the blood, <laughs> clean everything up, and mount <laughs> this red dragon head to, like, I imagine the center of Storm Herald just being like a, like a small, I don't know, dome. So she mounts it right outside that dome. The red head's the big head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, in case you couldn't tell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <By> the... <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, time's what something. are you saying Everything about redheads? There, be there. <laughs> <laughs> They're my favorite. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the the entire room gets completely uh, spick and span. It's very clean. It is polished, and all the blood is wiped up almost instantly as you see Whittle kind of move around you at hyper speed uh, as she casts time stop. When the it's time still stop, gross. When the time stop ends, Orkira, who is still up in the kitchen, looks over at Penelope and says. You know, if if I don't warn everybody, they just run off. And if I do warn everybody, they just run off. I I don't know what to do anymore. The cookies were delicious, though. Thank you. Should we go follow them? Another Sir Bissalot crawls out of the dishwasher. <laughs> Sir Bissalot, why are you why are you cleaning dishes? <laughs> you know, it just keeps crawling away. I, just, I mean, I, you, you can go away. I just, I, as, I feel bad that you've just been in the dishwasher this whole time. Where, as Modeus was right, I never got out of the cell. <laughs> 
Do you, do you need to go back to to Sophia's and Avery? And can I help with something? Oh, there are many. If you cut off one tentacle, two tentacles grow in this place. Uh, no, I'm not trying to kill you. I'm trying to help you. You shouldn't have to be here washing dishes. <laughs> I love dishes. Let's, let's, so, you so I hadn't nice told food. anyone this, but when 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 Sophia's and Avery left, I I offered the job to Sir Biswalot. I I've been paying paying him under the table. I mean, literally, literally. Under the table. literally under the table. <laughs> under what table? The kitchen table. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, okay. But f- fair wages, you know, okay. health benefits. Oh. Um, but oh, what's he's free to leave at any time. I hope okay. he's got accident insurance. It's just like Eldritch Blast. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to add hazard pay. And and the oh, curse of Sir will... is every time he's killed, two, another one of him, two more erupt. Over and over and over again. Yeah. Do I recognize this as a curse? Uh, I mean, I I see it as I don't think it's a bug. I think it's a feature. I will remove curse lots. on Sir Biswalot. Oh no, that don't work. Right. Uh, well, then it's not a curse. I put my hand on one of their shoulders. I'm just like, well, let me. Uh, oh no, you. All right, I'm just trying to help. But okay, yet, as long as you're getting paid. I've yet to get to use steel wind strike. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I will say down here with the with the Tiamat head down there with Briv, I'm just like, oh, you should have seen it, man. It was like wild. I, I mean, I, I only fought like a little bit. And then I went, I went looking for you because I was like, hey, Briv is really going to want to see Tiamat. And then I couldn't find you. And then it was like. Pow, 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 I could see I, Tiamat upon the mountain. But if we had not secured the other parts of the battlefield, then everyone, all of the would have died. Hey man, it was it was a multi prong attack. I just want you to know, I wanted you to be able to get in on some of that. That's all. I'm just not worried. But I mean, one dragon is the same as any other that I've uh, killed. That is patently incorrect. This was like very different. Like five heads, man. Just, you know what? It, but hey, good job though. We still got it. We got it. A dragon is a dragon is a dragon. <laughs> I, I'm not sure because Penelope and I. Correct. I mean, we killed like Norn. We killed. I don't know. There's so many things. I mean, we, we don't even kill most things. We're like, hey, does thou want to be our friend? And then it's like, oh, no one's what? ever asked me that. And then you, it's like, oh, that's a pretty what? good idea. Why are we always you, fighting? And then you know, you mentioned that that kind of happened with Tiamat. That's why I'm not sure Penelope's gonna want her head. So wait, Tiamat, thou didst while I was holding off that entire front, pretty much by myself, so to really- make sure that all of they did not get slaughtered. Thou wert up there trying to make friends with Tiamat after thou hadst cu- cut one of her heads off. No, a lot, a lot happened. I mean, there was gods. Lathander was there. Saloon was there. The Raven Queen was there. I mean, like, look, we got like these cool new outfits. Like, we got outfits. I did, oh, you didn't get an, oh, you didn't get an outfit. Oh, I didn't get an outfit. I don't no. need outfits. Uh, I don't yeah. even like to wear clothes. Y- yes, Alindra. Sorry, I know you were saying something. Oh no, it was it was something else. So don't don't worry. I was just going to, to talk about how you it's, you've certainly ensured that it's it's one way to make sure that you don't have to have your family at the wedding when you've just murdered your aunt you know i said i brought i pointed out to her that she was my aunt and we had met and she very much just tried to fire breath me and like lathander got involved which was weird i never met him but she never sent you high harvest tide gifts and i don't think that's how my family operates family is complicated this whole discussion is happening right in front of the severed head yeah (laughs) (laughs) just filling up the entire room you know, actually, I would like to do something that I've never tried before. Oh, God. I would... Please don't true resurrect the head. <laughs> First of all, do not give tempt me. Ideas. <laughs> do not tempt me. I'm not beyond it. I know she's got a true resurrection skull. This, this is right we're talking about. No, by, this, by this point, it's actually probably in my book because is I've it... had it for so long. I've had the time to describe it. Yeah. But... Uh, I'm going to try and reach out to Bahamut. Okay. I've never tried. I mean, I've, I've never tried to pray to him because that's never been a thing. So, but um, I, I do try and reach out to him. Yes. Is everything and, okay? Uh, rarely. Um, but he, you know what happened to your sister. I know you know. When, when I when I performed the ceremony for Asmodeus, 
I, I wanted him to be at peace, but I didn't want him to be at peace for good reasons. I wanted him to be at peace because he didn't want to be at peace. But should I say something over her? Should we take her somewhere? She can never truly die, son. Hmm. She is part of this world forever. Like a spine. Is is it strange that that actually makes me me happy? I mean, don't get me wrong. I didn't want her to like take over the world and, and ruin everything, but I don't know. Did, she still should should be in in Penelope reached something in her, so maybe maybe there's hope. Is any of this out loud? This is in my in my dome. Okay, good. <laughs> Unless he can hear. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Son, no, you have a good heart, and for the most part, you never mean anything that is live harm, except for Sir Bessalot. Uh, other he knows than that, what he I know. Did, Dad. <laughs> I understand aberrations are strange. I get it. Um, but no, that's not strange for you to feel good. And it's not for strange for you to feel bad either. She's done terrible things. It doesn't mean you want someone to die. And if Penelope reached her, then maybe one day there would be hope. And... He just looks up at the head and just sort of nods, and he says, um, well, well, while I'm talking to you, we, we, we picked a wedding day. It's, um, oh, good. It's a, yeah, it's a Kythorn 20. It's at the summer soul stock because the E is silent. Okay. That seems like a good day. <clears throat> I mean, maybe if you're not busy being like, you know, Lord over a lot of stuff, maybe you, maybe you can come by. <laughs> Be, and it's important. It's it's uh it's a uh, it's it's the brightest day of the year, which seemed appropriate. Son, I would love to be there, and I will be. And then just looks at Briv like he just zoned it and just like whoa, zoned out for a second, man. No, that yeah. Um, what happened yeah. to the? It was like we were talking, and then now it's just kind of go blank. I mean, I do that sometimes, but most of the time when it's uh, it's when I'm in the outhouse and nobody is there to see. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just, I feel this is the only time we have left. Like, we got to be able to, like, do something. Like, I mean, let's just, like, pick a city. Like, what, what's happening in Neverwinter or, like, Tin Towns or something? Like, we could help somebody, right? Listen, I am not arguing with going and doing something because uh, there isn't even any food on here besides cookies. So we I mean, can go her, wherever her, thou dost desire. Those cookies were wonderful. You stop it. Listen, but I do... I, for a cookie, perhaps. I mean, that was... A, made with love and in mud I, apparently I, lots of things are made with love my children come to me all the time with these little scribblings on rocks and other kinds of things and it's horrible it's made with love but it's still horrible i do think I, that recipe was learned from daisy perhaps you know that was the missing piece of the puzzle actually I, actually in the group chat i'm like okay wait you guys let's compromise we can just save like one place we can do like 10 towns we do like never winter um come on let's go let's go save let's liber let's liberate a subjugated area That's let the us way roll we a die and see where we are to go because rolling dice seems like a lot of fun it has never done us wrong perfect out loud to penelope still in the kitchen i would <clears> say eventually he's gonna run out of ways to distract him and then he's probably gonna need to deal with his trauma uh, let me know. I've I've got some people that he can talk to, okay? Okay. All right. But for now, I guess we'll play with dice? I don't know. I wasn't sure what's going on. Are you okay? Are you okay? Uh, I'm better. I'm working on it. But thanks for asking. Uh, you know, Akira, I... I know... I don't know what you're going through, but I know... I know how hard it is to lose friends. Like, really hard. You want to know a secret? Sure. I never had friends growing up. Like, like really, like, never. Never had friends. Nobody wanted to be my friend. And so, like, when I left home, going out on an adventure, 
I asked myself, why doesn't anyone want to be my friend? And and you might think that it's like really easy for me to make friends, but I actually work really hard at it because, well, I know what it's like to not have friends, so I don't want anybody to feel that way. And, well, I'll always be your friend. And I'll do whatever it takes to get your friends back, because I do believe it's possible. I'll walk up and hug Penelope. <clears throat> yeah, I can't, I can't fix everything. I sometimes feel like I should try, but I can't. Uh, the Phoenix and I think we might have a way to at least fix Waterdeep, which, which would help, because, you know... It wasn't just a bunch of friends that they wrote. They were like all of you. They were part of my family. But there was a lot of people who died. But it's it's been really helpful to know that you've been you're my friend, and that I've still got all of you. And uh, thinking about you being happy and your wedding is helping a lot. So whatever I can do to help you, that helps me. And that's what friendship is. Well, that and cookies. And cookies. Oh, next time, and I'll reach into my bag and pull out the little bag of marshmallows. Next time, uh, here, tell me when you're going to make cookies and you can add the marshmallows to the cookies. And then they end up like all gooey inside. That sounds amazing, yes. Yeah, it mixes with the mud really well. Yum, 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 yum. All right, uh, we should go find out what everybody else was rolling. I guess we're rolling things. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. I mean, I mean, that whole game of um of uh, damsels in distress or whatever we were playing before. What what was it called? Um, um swords Le and Leviathan's Stronghold. and Dragons. Le uh, no, there was neither dungeons nor dragons in the game we played, though. That does not make no. sense. But, but I mean, thou canst say dungeons and landscapes and nice cities and metropoli and like thou canst list everything comma separated in the title of a game table settings and taxes apparently Ooh. there was a lot of math and talking but you know but you said you wanted you liked the dice so you roll it briv did you keep one of those <clears throat> things the chance I cubes have, didn't we bring them. sets for everyone back what are what am I rolling? I'm, one I'm of more the of little a... cubes or one of the giant like I don't know, it has so many sides on it. I shall roll this one. It has some weird looking little red beholder on it. Oh, oh. it is. Oh, okay. I know that one. Yeah. That one has six sides. That's true. Kind of champion that doesn't hey, do oh, anything. Hey, active. that's that's Iris. It's... I'm we met Iris. Hi, yeah, Iris. Hi Iris. Oh, I remember yeah. Iris. Terrible, yeah. terrible voice. Um, oh <laughs> very well. So, she was trying her best. We shall very well. I shall roll. Oh, it's all coming up, all Iris. See, off in the distance, she's very proud of you, darling. Oh. All right, um, that is I... new nightmare fuel right there. Forget my buttocks. <laughs> Iris is a delight, Briv. She was lovely. We enjoyed. I think thou mispronounced terror. <laughs> no, she... do you remember she gave us the the, the out? Well, the outfits were terrifying. To be fair, there were ball gowns and top hats, and, and you see Griff, and Griff just like glares in judgment at the mere mention of the top hat. You did look, you all, you looked very lovely, both of you did. The jester <laughs> thing, it was very good on Thou Calves. Yes. Uh, you know, the last you... time I hung out with friends that got me outfits, it was a really nice dress. I don't know why <laughs> you you all go off to go do adventures and then come back like as red pandas and things. You, you've got some very weird friends. Also... There were dresses. No, Alintra looked incredible. I had, had I had I had a gown with a corset, mm. but mm. it was bright pink. It, but it worked though. It accented your eyes. Mm -hmm. Why? Thank you. <laughs> um. All right. So, uh, maybe that maybe that should give us an indication of where we might want to go. Yes. Uh, what does this mean? Where? Where? where, where Adam, I'm sending you a DM <laughs> <laughs> since you rolled the dice. Sure. Oh, very well. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, does that mean we're supposed to find Iris? Does that mean we're supposed to go fight some beholders? Does that mean? Uh... I don't know. While he's looking that up, hey, Riddle, it may that... just mean we need to dress up for the wedding. Well, I think I think we do anyway. Um, now that you've been away from the book for like a little bit, how you feeling? I feel great. 
I feel free. And okay. wait, where where did you send that Todd? Sorry. Not not attached to a book. Oh, okay, I'll good. Send, I'll send it this way. I, I think you'll have a better shot at not turning super evil now that you're not attached to the book. Uh, you know what? I, I didn't really say it out loud, but I was kind of worried that the whole point of me going to Barovia was not going to go the way that I wanted it if I was <laughs> attuned to the book. <laughs> Listen, I, I uh... have become somewhat of an expert on books and the way that they're sometimes bad. So I'm glad we could help with that. All yeah. right. Uh, anyway, Briv is laughing, so I think he has. I have the results of the die roll. We are to go to Hooper Duke. Oh. It's, I, I didn't I didn't hate Hooper Duke. I what? did not hate Hooper Duke. I've never been well, to Hooper Duke. Seems like a great place has... for a bachelor party. Wait till you get a quotation love it. circle. Oh. So it's an easy trip. We could go assuming things go well, we could be having jousting in the streets within the day. And there's Let's a hot it. dog machine. Jousting yeah. in the streets. Yeah. Also, All right. sent you to keep. That's where right. you want to go. Sure. All well, right. okay. Just, just one quick what thing. I, I mean, Riz's butter baby is out there I, somewhere. I, 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 just, <laughs> I, start, I start walking towards the control room, and I'm like, just one little thing to keep in mind, Whittle. Uh, both or Kira and I died there, so there's that. But besides that, also everywhere else, and I do mean everywhere else in Wild Mount was awful. But Hooper Duke was nice. How yeah. did you almost die in Hooper Duke? No, I actually died. No, she, both of us. We did, did not oh. make it. Um, oh. But I mean, we weren't in Hooper Duke when we died. Like, she was in Rexentrum. I was on a boat, but then I wasn't on a boat. That's why I kept thinking I was dead when we were in Port Argent. Um, you weren't in Port Argent. That was when we were with Sophia. Uh, but when I was with Avery Sophia, and Sophia, tell me all about it. Yeah. I thought I was dead because I was in a very large explosion that I thought I was. You know what? I'll tell you when we get there. And I do jump okay. to Hooper Duke. <laughs> you jump to Hooper Duke? Um, yeah. Will you see out one of the, the portholes? Well, probably the hole that from the lightning bolt that destroyed the dishwasher that Whittle put through the entire Storm Herald. Uh, you see a massive, huge, multi tiered gnomish city, mm. and you see all ty types of mechs and machinery and smoke building out of it, all types of war machines being constructed. And all of you see at the same time a giant black rock floating in the sky, blotting out the sun. Wow. What is that? I like and it. You that... see twisted monsters with wings flying out of it towards Hooper Duke. Does this oh. remind me of the rock that the, uh, the Far Realms creatures were coming out of? Uh oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It was just outside of Hooper Duke Which and then they the were Star Spawn and yeah. the oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there was a big as, yep. As yep. as Modi has showed me a lot of terrible outcomes. Does this look like his doing? Uh this is a terrible outcome that could happen without him. Hmm. Yes, this very much looks like an asteroid. Just floating though. And all types of twisted monsters are flying out of it as it's hovering above Hooper Duke. I just actively trying to snatch gnomes off the ground. I just look at Briv and then Divine Sense. Just quick check in, make sure these things pop as evil before I do what I do. Oh, oh I yeah. I do that too. I've told you many times. <laughs> you think and you so sense a I whole bunch like more Serpisolots in, in, in the ship, <laughs> in Star Herald, like under the floors, in the ceiling? You know, Penelope, I thought we'd retire on this ship, but now not so much. Now not so much. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's something deeply evil coming out of there. Absolutely. Can I tell where this asteroid came from? Is there a portal nearby? Does it look like it's a ship? Uh, I, I happen to be fairly conversant in Far Realm crap for uh, reasons. Uh, you... <laughs> It seems like it recently arrived, certainly, and it looks like from your eyesight, these things have been burrowing out of this asteroid that appeared. Alindra, because of your true sight, you can actually see that the, the tear in the weave where a portal must have once been, where the demons were pouring out, that portal has since been closed, but this thing might have pushed through just in time. 
through a, a kind of the corruption of the weave was able to come out of somewhere out of either the astral plane or the far realms you're not sure and the creatures we see look like tentacled oh just just writhing tentacles with galore. large bat wings just flying through the air and they're taking they're dive bombing at hooper to grabbing gnomes I and just doing what is this is this a grab and kill or are they taking them somewhere they're grabbing them and bringing them back. I look at Penelope and I say, okay, so do you want to go to the ground and protect the gnomes or do you want to go right in there and try and blow up whatever this is? Okay, we got to think tactically here. Um, a we bit. Do? What are we doing? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, Alindra also goes, like Wait, what? What are we doing? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's been, it's been Wait, did we, three did years. We into some sort of parallel dimension. <laughs> Nothing makes sense in Hooper Duke. I'm so confused. I am so happy right now. Yes, please. Let's think tactically. I will just say while she's like, let's think well, I tactically. Start I start Eldritch Blasting, the nearest one that's carrying a gnome. Just that I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about what we should do. Uh, go, ahead, go, go ahead. Go ahead and roll. Go and ahead and give me a roll. Shooting. You go ahead. But we do have basically a fortress here as well. I don't, but I, I don't, cottage is like ultra fortified. I don't. To, to make a plan. Hmm. I yeah, don't, uh, I, I don't, uh, I don't fly away though. I am just like, cool, cool, cool. You guys tell me what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. How big is this thing? Like, how big? Uh, it is about four times the size of Storm Herald. Okay, that's great. You guys, I got an idea while we plan things and nobody's close. I can finally do druid things. Yes. Go do druid things. Yeah. What do you need? Clear, thou couldst do druid things even if I was close. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> and as all of this is happening, you are seeing like every one of these creatures that comes out looks different. It's a different shape. It's a different form. Some of them are just floating masses of just flesh that are in incomprehensible and hard to even look at. But they're flying. And at the same time, weird gnomish flying devices are flying past Storm Herald. Some of them almost look like really not well made biplanes with maybe like 18 propellers. And they're shooting from gunner seats at these things. And they're just, there is a massive flying battle happening between the two ships. My lowest attack was a dirty 20. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Boop, 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 boop. You got about yep. four beams in you? Yeah, I'm, I'm four. I'm, I'm four now. Yep. Yeah, you're dropping gnomes, and they immediately GI Joe it, and like parachutes go up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they, yeah. And they yep. slowly descend at the same yep. time as you're shooting these creatures. Yep. It just like the suppression fire while they like I'm like no, I'm listening to you guys. I promise. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> how how loud is your Eldritch blast? I imagine it's a little bit bassy. It's uh, it is a very, it's very, very tall for an Eldritch Blast. Yeah, it's just <laughs> streaks of green and red energy that is like. Yeah. All right. I imagine right. also when you, every time you cast it, like a little piece of magic like drops onto the ground, <laughs> like a, like a spin shell. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, General Penelope, what are your orders? Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, no. Why? What did you want to do? Maybe we can make it happen. No, it's not worth it. We got gnomes to protect. They're everywhere. Hey, Penelope, I think we still have a, a bunch of alchemist fire. We could probably use these catapults to sling them at this asteroid and the star spawn who are stealing the, the gnomes. Okay, think, yes. Yes, yeah, here's is the that a good idea. Yeah, okay. we're gonna take down this asteroid and and make sure that it can't leave, so we can save yes. all the gnomes. Here's a strange question: Is the asteroid itself alive? Is it a creature? Uh, no, it is okay. definitely a a stable rock. Yeah, I mean, considering I mean, this, is, this might be far realm, yeah. Between between volleys, I stop and I turn and I look at them and I say, "You guys remember how those hot dog machines work that they had here, right? They like they just load it up and it would just shoot hot dogs out. Uh, there's a real chance that asteroid is the hot dog machine that is turning the gnomes into this stuff and shooting it back out again. You guys do we all we're all clear on that, right? That's usually how oh, no. hot dogs of, yeah. are absolutely the worst. They're kind of like the what? bastards of meat. 
I mean, they're like the bastards of meat. I mean, honestly, like. Right? And next, you, well, while we're spouting heresy, next you're gonna tell me that a hot dog is not a sandwich, and then I go back to shooting again. <laughs> Whittle, can taco. you can you move Storm Herald up next to the rock, and maybe we can pull as many gnomes out before we destroy this thing as possible? Uh, yeah. How how far do you think we should park Storm Herald next to this rock? About uh. Five I feet? I don't know. Get close. Yeah. It's blessed. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe like uh, 25 I feet or something. I wanted Penelope to do druid things. I don't know why that didn't happen. You should do well. the druid things. I, I believe in you. Uh, Whittle's just going to put Storm Herald in neutral and just creep towards this asteroid until someone tells me to stop. Hope, do you want to DM me something? Like, like you, you want me, I'm curious what you wanted to do. <laughs> It's a really cool spell, but it's also really big and doesn't do as much damage if as not I thought. Now damage win. isn't the if most important thing. Not now, win. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Fine. I'll do it. And hopefully the gnomes will be okay. All right, Penelope. Where are we right now? Maybe is there a way that Whittle could assist? I know Whittle traditionally this is something different, but we we worked together for so long. Perhaps Whittle's magic could supplement yours, um, and you could use. Whittle's abilities, if Whittle would assist, to to avoid the gnomes. Are you saying that I could use Whittle's sculpt? I'm saying that with the understanding that we've all gained of each other's abilities and skills, and also the amount of research I've put into magic and higher level magics and things like the Nithala and things beyond what has been the magic in this world, I'm saying that as a team, we're much stronger than we are individually. And I think it would be worth trying to synergize our powers. And, uh, and if she's wrong, um, I think Freely's right in that it's turning, it's probably turning the gnomes into the awful stuff. If you hit a gnome, I can bring the gnome back. So I think if if it doesn't work, I can fix the gnome problem, but I can't fix them being a far realm thing. So okay. yeah. Okay. Our powers combined. With our powers combined, it's time uh, to bring We can we'll, we'll roll Captain me an arcana check right now. Against that planet? <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a two, but good thing good thing I have that plus twelve. <laughs> <laughs> uh wow uh yeah you think it's not gonna be comfortable but you can hook storm herald up to penelope and um, enhance penelope's magic beyond that <laughs> i'm gonna give penelope a boost as well i will cast foresight on penelope um penelope i take out a hummingbird feather and i say i'm I think this will work. See, if I give a bit of my power to you, you should be able to see the future just a few moments ahead. So you will have um, the ability to see the immediate future for the duration. You cannot be surprised. You have advantage on attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws. And other creatures will have disadvantage on attack rolls against you. Wow. I'll be able to foresee things? Uh, yes. Uh, intuit a bit. Closer so, to like, but like you got this, and also you got this. I give her bardic inspiration and guidance. <laughs> Wait a minute, Penelope, you want to be hooked up to Storm Herald? Yeah, sure. Yeah, why not? Oh, I mean, All I've right. never done that um, before, but you only before. got it too. And also, here's a here's a thing. But, what's the worst? Okay, what's the what animal does Penelope have to become? And how do you do this in the worst possible way? Connect it to. <laughs> to 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 Penelope, you got it too. Uh, so can I, I add to that with my staff wires. of fate? Uh, you can. It's going. Sure. It's going to be rough either way. What's but the yeah. staff of fate? I get to add a d10. I'm sorry. Yep. I can. It can be a d4. No, I can use my um my uh my other ability. My my time my fate thing. So I'll apply a d10 to that roll for you. Thank okay. you. Sure. Go ahead and roll it. I let's make cannot, this epic. I cannot pull up my, the thing that tells me what my DNA is right now. Hmm. Um, it's like some type of sheet that lives. Do you need? Would you like some assistance if it's a public element of uh, DNA? I, I, Something you've no, discussed with us. No, I have. Fi it finally has refactored within oh, me, and I am going to cast bless on Penelope. <laughs> 
<laughs> Penelope's just like glowing and like mm -hmm. there's a wind upon And Alindra her. sees you cast Bless and her face goes, oh. <gasps> <laughs> okay. I so what, what's the total roll for Whittle now? Uh, 16. Okay. And how do you, okay. So tell me the creature that. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> let, is 16 let, let's, let's... bad? Something. No, it's still not bad, but uh, Penelope, what's the weirdest creature you've never gone to Wild Sheep in that you would need to change into to make this work? Wait, I don't know. What are we talking about? You're about to be hooked up into Storm Herald, and you need to be a particular shape to make this magic work. So I it's do? just a very weird moment. Yeah. So what do you? What does Penelope Wild Shape into? Oh, she's always wanted to be a killer whale. <laughs> Orcanus, orca. And I reach into a demi plane and I pull out a tank. <laughs> Orcas are like my favorite thing ever, so this is the best step. Of All right. I so, don't have to wonder if she'll be friends with me. I know she already is. Whittle, you you attach a bunch of wires and weird tubes to this tank that Lyndra pulls out of a demi plane, and you, Penelope, how do you well shape into a giant whale, a killer whale? I think it just starts with her, like kind of like wiggling her butt. And then, like, <laughs> just like, yeah, I think really hard, really hard. I hear everybody, and poof, just bubbles everywhere as she transforms. Ah, yes, the wand of Orca. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> at that moment, all the water sprays all over all of you because there is considerably more Penelope mass than there was before in the not, tank. This is a splash zone. <laughs> or, Kira, you had something to say. I'm just impressed, and now I wish there was a pot of petunias. We could uh, make that happen too. Uh, maybe later. Maybe later. I'm gonna hang tight until I see what Penelope's about to do. Uh, you start getting hit by by blasts and attacks and and strange magics coming off of this asteroid floating above Storm Herald at this moment. What do you do, Penelope? Because Penelope is an arch druid, she can cast spells as a freaking whale. <laughs> you, you are the spell whale. <laughs> <laughs> Magic whale. Whale spells. Be the spell whale. Penelope just starts singing a whale song. Oh my god, that is like badass. Mm -hmm. And she cast Storm of Vengeance upon the asteroid. All right, what does Storm of Vengeance? I didn't know this was a spell. <laughs> Storm of Vengeance is a lot. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All um, right, tell me about Storm of Vengeance. Okay, let's do this. All right, uh, churning storm clouds centered on a point I can see have a radius of 360 feet. Lightning flashes, thunder booms, strong winds roar each creature under the cloud. Must make the constitution saving throw. If failed, takes thunder damage and becomes deafened for five minutes. And then other things happen as we go. <laughs> And other it things happen it, as it we compounds. go. Oh, yes. It, it, get, it gets worse. Yes. It continues to increase. Oh, yes. I know it well. I All right. Like to, I would like to run outside. And as she's doing this, um, I'm going to keep an eye on any accidental gnomes that get caught in this. And I want to send healing or revivification, whatever I got to do, so that Penelope doesn't accidentally hit anybody. Uh, Penelope the whale. <laughs> You are blessed with the ability to sculpt spells because all the wires that are like attached to you and also this tank from Whittle and some of it is like there's active active live electrical wires like kind of zapping in your water. water around you. Yeah. So you're you're getting like a little bit of a shock here and there, you know, a little bit of zoop uh this entire time and you cast it and Storm Herald the built the entire the entirety of Storm Herald just kind of revs up and lightning just kind of crackles around all of the building and all of your hair if you have it just starts like popping up and then it just just poofs out <laughs> and storm herald cast storm storm vengeance right on the asteroid nice that was your intent on the asteroid correct yes all right and you see all of these creatures fall to the ground screaming and all the gnomes are left alone and they're weird contraptions weirdly and they don't know what's going on at all and the lightning is a little off uh <laughs> you don't know what quite well what does this lightning look like that's coming out of the storm uh <laughs> it it looks uh, like 
I don't, <laughs> I don't know. You got me. Okay. <laughs> angry lightning. It looks it's like, angry it's like it looks it's like vampire fangs because we got rainbow power lightning. in there, right? Yeah, it's rainbow, oh, rainbow lightning, lightning, lightning it's, for sure. It's going like out the side, <laughs> like it's not coming from where it's supposed to be coming. And you see, all these creatures have been deafened. Can you roll the thunder damage for me and add the bless and every all the other things people added onto your roll? Oh as... my. Okay, it's gonna take me a second. <laughs> Okay, well, the damage is seven points. <laughs> gotcha. And I'm allowing you to use Bless to add on to that. And uh, what's what did... Uh, yeah. And what did Freely give you? Uh, D10. A Bless from Riv would definitely do damage. A, a D10. A D10 Bardic and a D4 Guidance. Well, the Guidance is just a skills check. So Yeah, make... Well, oh. no, I'm laying it all... All the magic is being mm -hmm. poured into Penelope right now. She's turned all into a magic. giant whale or You know, she does battery. have a book of exalted deeds. Yeah. You know, she's, she's <laughs> connected to the very fabric of goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in total, that is 16 points. And we'll okay, six, 16 points of damage. Several of these aberrations fall to the ground. Just and then splat when they hit. Or Carrie, you were able to grab a few of the gnomes, start falling, and a few of their parachutes don't open up, and you kind of like snag one by the claw, and you keep on making dive runs, grabbing gnomes. What, what are you doing? I would say once I see Orkira is doing that, Freely would jump and do the same because the other flyer, you know, let's like get out there. Yeah, and, absolutely. And really, really, if, if Penelope asks. It all went perfectly, and she didn't hit anything that she didn't mean to hit, right? I mean, this is perfect for us, so... I mean, true. Okay. Yeah. So all of the star spawn are killed? Uh, a bunch of them are killed, but then big, massive ones start crawling out of the holes towards you at this moment. Uh, if Whittle sees that, she is going to cast Reverse Gravity. <laughs> on the ones crawling out of the hole in the asteroid. They, okay. So you cast reverse gravity and one of the hole, in one of the holes, you are able to cause them to constantly go up and just hover. <laughs> and they and then another one comes out and it just hovers. And another one comes out and it just hovers in the air over and over again until there's just a whole bunch of them hovering. Everyone go ahead and roll me some uh, uh, initiative. Oh, okay. And hope don't forget you have advantage on that initiative roll. Oh yes, great, awesome. Because that was bad. Well, that's better. Seventeen. Uh, Six. Alindra has a fifteen. Twenty-four. That's a ten for Whittle. Seven. That's a. Uh, you beat me. And what did you get again, Briv? Six. Oof. How did I beat Briv? Brooks distracted. <laughs> oh, God. Well, they're going last. <laughs> um, and that's going last. Okay. Well, here we go. All right, Freely, what are you doing? You, you've you managed to save several gnomes. Are you dumping them on Storm Herald at this moment <laughs> as this uh, these explosions are happening around you? I am. How many of them, how many of these aberrations are in, in the, the sky over us now? Uh, too many. Excellent. That is the number I wanted. Um, <laughs> as, I, as I drop some of these, I'm like, Briv, 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 Briv. And then I cast for the first time Steel Wind Strike, which I teleport and hit five different targets. <laughs> it's like... Going after I read them. that book of nine swords one time. <laughs> yep. Go ahead and roll, roll me a bunch of attack rolls. I, I will. Uh, I'm smiting them all, but well, let me see. Well, hang on. Let me read it. Uh, you smite, can't, you I, can't smite I, with it. It's weird. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I cannot because it is not an attack. I just, uh, I, I mean, it is an attack, damage. but yeah, the way right. it, yeah. Yep. No, but, uh, but I do a bunch. Uh, let's see here. It's one of my favorite spells. It's yes, good. it's uh, yep, that's too bad. It would have been too much, even I must admit, it's too much. Uh, my lowest was a dirty 20. Okay, well, you hit all of them then. If your lowest was a dirty 20, go ahead and roll the damage. Penelope, what are you doing right now? It is now round two, effectively. It is now round two. <laughs> so, acid rain starts to fall from this cloud. Each creature will take 1d6 acid damage, just 
No save. And I want you to add, again, all the bonuses that you were given. Okay. And if you want to use that as a flat bonus to make it simpler. That's fine. I'll roll it. And so that's 15 acid damage to everyone underneath the cloud. Do you see all these little kind of like biplanes and little, little weird war balloons that are floating by of gnomes? The, the acid rain is just sculpting around them because of the magic that is being shoved into to, to, to Penelope at this moment as she's connected to Storm Herald. And all the ones in the reverse gravity, uh, Whittle, are just melting and it is awful. It looks like the <laughs> grossest aberration snow cone you've ever seen as they just like, ah! like they have no say they're just melting in like black blood red blood purple blood yellow blood like it's almost pretty if it wasn't for all the tentacles and all the teeth the teeth that's what i call teamwork so many of the teeth so Mm -hmm. many teeth so many teeth and uh how much was the damage uh sorry from me yeah 15 15 points of tent here they're melting it's awful freely you are for a moment distracted by this it is uh, one of the worst things you've seen, and you've seen a lot of bad things. And that brings us to Alinder. What are you doing? I love that whale. <laughs> I, you know, I would like... <laughs> You're getting married to that whale. <laughs> it's, it's, man, if I hadn't already proposed, I would have now. <laughs> I mean, if you know I didn't lock that in, I mean, if she I mean, was going to stay as a whale, the... I probably would have <laughs> on, on the page in the Book of Exalted Deeds, a sudden deed shows up and a whale appears inside the book and it says a whale of a tail. <laughs> Eldritch blast the book. <laughs> yeah. okay. um, I would I don't usually like to, to hurt people, but this is these aren't people. These are terrible, horrible, no good, very bad aberrations. Um and so I will I will look at where they are collectively gathered by Whittle all in one lovely clump. Um, and I will cast a 7th level fireball. <laughs> you cast a 7th level fireball? Uh, I'm. They don't, they're not making any deck saves today, so go ahead and roll the damage for that oh, fireball. That is a, I almost feel bad for him. <laughs> no, we haven't gotten to their turn yet. Don't feel bad for him yet. Don't feel yeah, bad don't, for don't, him. Let's, no. let's not rush the judgment. All right, all right. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, how how did, how does this die? Thirty eight. How does this happen? Uh, you see a, a ball of flame uh, come out of Alindra's hand. It starts fairly small, and as it goes, it expands and expands and expands and expands and expands. Um, and much like knowledge, it grows as you go uh, and speeds towards them. Uh, and when they're all clumped up, it just goes and it comes and it, it just encompasses the entire lot surrounding them, wreathing them in flame, catching the the, the catching the, the the lightning and the acid uh, that may have attacked them from Penelope's work and uh, suffusing them with the lovely warm kiss of flame as you it car- burns. You caramelized oh. the Precisely. Sarsan. I caramelized the sugar. Caramelized that breath. Getting some Maillard reactions happening there. Uh. <laughs> They, they the the melting goo of it actually seals the whole that particular hole in this asteroid <laughs> as it becomes caramelized and gross and they're probably starting to think maybe we should stop going out of this hole uh weirdly enough those who are on storm herald more and more serpisolots appear that have been in hiding this entire time because of the tyrannical efforts of one freely and they jump onto the highest points of storm herald and every time an aberration gets close to one of them they mind blast them (gasps) oh that's right see really they're they're our friends see this is why you should pay and support your workforce they um they make sure that they have your back as well there are about seven serpisolots just like and then one uh, an aberration drops to the ground and just plummets in craters. Uh, we are on Whittle's turn. Whittle is going to um, dimension door to one of those 18 propeller planes that the gnomes are flying around in. Oh, God. Um, and she's going to dimension door right on top. If there's like a window, she's going to look down and say, hello, don't mind me. But can you, can you fly towards uh, y- your friends that are, that are getting picked off? And if they do so, she's, you know, going to spider climb on the plane and, and 
try and tug the gnomes away from the star spawn. Uh, whittle any, give me an athletics or acrobatics check. I will do athletics since I have advantage and a plus 11. Oof. Okay. Oh, it was almost a 19. Uh, 16. You are hopping because you are so fast. You're hopping from like biplane to biplane, uh, helping save and stop stopping attacks from a lot of these aberrations from hitting the gnomes you're flat out like grabbing steering wheels and turning them left and turning them right preventing them from getting attacks so they have advantage on all of their attacks i mean on, on all of their um saving throws versus the attacks of these creatures sorry excuse me is this official heroes of the plane's business <laughs> what are you what are you heroes doing of the hey i know how i know how pilot why are you so pale Wait, are you Whittle? <laughs> yeah, turn left. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, God, the thing just exploded. It caramelized. It's so gross to humanity. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and you just see Whittle hopping from biplane to biplane super quickly. Or Kira, what are you doing? I see Whittle saving gnomes from being grabbed into the asteroid, but I'm pretty sure there's still some more inside. Do I see an entrance? You see several entrances, yes. I'm going to look at Freely. I'm going to say, wish me luck. I'm going to fly on in. I'm going to cast Spirit Guardians at 8th level. So anything I come across that isn't a... That, that is one of these horrible aberrations needs to make a wisdom saving throw DC 20 or else the fireball that is spinning around me is going to whack it. And even if it makes it, it's going to take half damage. Uh, and the dirty thing about spirit guardians is if as soon as it enters my range, it has to make that even if I fly into it. So I'm going to find one of these holes. I'm going to fly on in. I'm going to start looking for gnomes to save or a way oh. to uh, maybe destroy this thing from the inside. Uh, you got, all right. What's the DC? It's a wisdom saving throw DC 20. If they make it, they still say take half of this radiant damage. All right. You start flying through this tunnel and it, Oh, God, how many natural 20s are there going to be today? Oh. Never enough. Uh, that's two natural 20s for those playing at home. That means some wild mm. magic is about to happen. You fly through the tunnel, and, yep, you run into a whole bunch of star spawn hulks, these twisted masses that were starting to crawl out. And the first one tries to grab you as you fly past it, uh, but it misses. But it seems relatively unaffected. The other, the, and, and well, they still take half tough. damage. No, no, I'm, yeah. yeah. But uh, go ahead and roll the damage and tell me how much they're taking. Uh, anyone that fails takes 38 radiant damage. Anyone that succeeds take half. And uh, their uh, speed is halved. So as I fly by, I'm just like, oh, nope, not saving you. Nope, 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 nope. And I'm just either looking for a, a gnome or gnomes to save or like the control center of this place. Uh, you do. You can smell gnome. And there is a place that they are imprisoning the gnomes, and it's almost this gross green-like spider web material that they've been encaged in. Uh, but you are staring at two star spawn hulks that are not, uh, are relatively unaffected by your magic at that time. That is your action. Yeah, and I'm just I'm heading for the gnomes. So unless these things are in my way, I your gnome would bound. I'm yeah. Across the star spawn, gnome word bound. You do and see all around in the air, there are like several. <laughs> that is the first time I've gotten someone to walk off. I got it. That's oh, like two today. Years. We, uh, you see several of these flying gnomish devices, like one of the the battle balloons made entirely of metal. You're not entirely sure why this thing is able to float. Explodes as one of the star spawn attacks it with some kind of eldritch energy. And several, and you see the occasional ship just crash into the side of this asteroid. It is just absolute mayhem, and everything's burning. So is Briv's turn. What is actually going on? Like we've got like a, like, you're, you're on Stronghold right now, and everything's exploding. Like There's a whole bunch of Eldritch creatures pouring out of this asteroid. Storm Herald's below it. Freely's grabbing gnomes where he can. Uh, uh, you know, at, at the same time... Uh, Whittle is jumping from flying gnomish object to trying to save gnomes. Or Kara has just flown into the asteroid itself. Penelope is a whale that is connected to Storm Herald itself and has summoned the storm around this asteroid. 
and Elendra is uh, assisting her and just threw a fireball directly into a giant mass of floating uh, thrust bombs. I think that's basically it, yeah. I, I appreciate that, that Adam was... just got Todd to give a recap for this this battle, and this recap was epic. Thank you. Excuse, excuse me. I'm not just saving gnomes. I'm still wind striking around like a freaking anime character. In <laughs> that's Rain. right. That's yeah, what was sweet, the damage okay? on all of that? Like, okay, Very, yeah. You... Uh, they range from 20 to 40. They, it, it was a spectrum. It was a spread. <laughs> Yep. very well um okay so um you're just exploding out of these things really <laughs> yeah these we're, are the little the... guys but you're just like Boop. but every time i'm teleporting closer to the asteroid with everyone <laughs> we're just trying right. to figure out yep. like what does he think is the biggest threat right now like is there an individual biggest threat or is it just a whole bunch of stuff happening all over the place uh oof, boy uh, because Br briv thinks about things that way he's basically head of the snake like yeah. what, is there something that he you, can there's gotta be a chewy center to this you you you've had candy uh, his, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah this might be a, this is clearly a giant space uh jawbreaker okay so if Briv sees holes, which I imagine with all of that going on, there's got to oh, be yeah. something, right? You so, just watched a big golden dragonborn friend of yours <laughs> surrounded by ghosts and spirits just fly into one of those tunnels. So you um, see Briv... Fireballs. Just, She's surrounded by fireballs. Sorry. Briv, Briv's pretty Carmelized. fast. But he, he, takes, he starts Those running, and uh, as he's running, he lets out a, a whistle, and you see Spiral come out, and... <sighs> and like uh go go through um and briv jumps off the side of storm herald onto spiral and he's gonna go into one of those holes i don't know how far i can get but basically i'm going into the middle of it and i've seen independence day i've seen star wars i've seen everything that, that there's got to be something important when he gets in there and uh when, whenever he identifies whatever he thinks that is um he is going to cast destructive wave uh, on it he's gonna yeah. jump off of spiral and basically spiral knows because we practice this that he's gonna get out of there where he's not in the wave gotcha um uh, well i can protect allies anyway but still he's not gonna get in the aftermath either so briv is basically gonna jump off in destructive wave when he gets into that chewy center you you find one of the least curvy one you don't go into the same tunnel that or carry got into you find like one that is super fast because you are on the back of uh of of your uh of your mount you are moving incredibly quick and you zap right through to nearly the center you do run do run into a few star spawn hulks however before you can do so okay um so you, you're saying they impede my progress they impede your progress with them first okay yep. that's fine um so i'm going to um wait until as many as i can possibly get around me or or hanging off of me or gathered upon me or whatever else gotcha and i'm still going to destructive wave oh, okay so you're gonna hold on okay go ahead and just roll your damage what's the yeah. save for them um the save for them is going to be um it is which type of save were you and, and you're zooming past and you literally see like whittle hop over you and jump on a on a plane and mm -hmm. hop onto a balloon and you also see freely just checkering i'm intentionally not targeting them because this spell mm -hmm. allows you to do that it's a constitution save of 18 and then um if they fail they're also going to be knocked prone which i means if they're up in the air they're they're going to start falling All right. And I'm going to go ahead and roll damage. They'll take uh, half as much okay. on a success. But let's see. And do we Ooh, know our wild nice. magic surges yet? Um, I, no, not yet. See. Okay. Yeah, I'll see. Then. Oh, yeah, we got something here. Let me see. Um, so, yeah, Todd, you get a third, 37. And I will paste that into the thing. Oh, wow. I don't know what you're going to do with this one. That's fun. Yeah, that, there's a lot of ways that could go. That doesn't sound ominous at all. No, yeah. not really. Yeah, Just I'm sure it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Just a weird one. I rolled 42 points. Rolled very well on those D6s. 42 points of damage in, um, let's see, the radius of that is 30 feet. So Six. any that I can get within 30 feet. 
Okay. How much damage was that? Uh, right. 42. 42? All right. Yep. I mean, appropriate. It's We've got a like, whale. We've got petunias. and everything. And, exactly. And uh, in this context, I'm staying on spiral because I want to get to the Chewy Center next. So. Yeah, you, you blast into them. Uh, or Kara, you hear the boom from above you and dirt falls on top of your head uh, for a moment and it kind of floats in the air as everything in here kind of has no gravity. But you kind of hear uh, this, the familiar boom of a brev inside ah, the asteroid. Me. Oh, good. <laughs> I look over at the two star spawn that are next to me, the, the hulks, and I'm like, you're in trouble now. I'm going to go get the gnomes. Unfortunately, a wild magic surge strikes something deep in the very heart of the asteroid. And that thing is teleported 60 feet in the direction of Orkara Eldrex. And the entire cave explodes as this massive star spawn emissary grows in front of you. Okay, it needs above. to make a wisdom saving throw, DC 20, as it's entered my spirit guardian. Uh, and, and I have foreseen Oops. this moment, so it will get a three. Awesome. Uh, I rolled that too low. Give me. I have to add a couple more d8s. Hold on. Uh, so 32. Oh, irony. <laughs> uh, so if it fails, it's going to take 42 radiant damage. If it succeeds, it takes half. Uh, and its speed is halved. <laughs> All right, yeah. It, it it the wild magic surge goes off and immediately is affected by your guardians. And now we are back to oh, now we're on the hulks and they are attacking you, Arkara. Okay, uh, both of them start their turn in my spirit guardian, so they need to make wisdom saving throws, DC 20. <laughs> spirit guardians are dirty. They dirty, are dirty. Is the dirtiest of dirty. Uh if they fail the saving throw, they take 40 radiant damage each. If they succeed, they take half. Wow. I cast it at eighth level. Just wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're hurting. All of these these hulks are all around you and they're monstrous and hideous. And and you don't this is not your jam, obviously, nor is it anyone's. They look very severely damaged and they are taking swings at you now. Okay. Oh, sorry. One of them attempts to bite you. Does a 19 hit? Uh 19 is my armor class. Okay. And you take, what, 18 points of piercing damage on okay. top of, and as it drips down its teeth and pours into the wounds itself, and you take another nine points of acid damage. Ah, gross. <laughs> and it continues to chomp on you. Does that is not a snack. No. That's, an, that's another hit. It bites into your arm. I have foreseen this as well. Um. Oh well, no, you know, no, it's okay. I, okay. Are you are you good? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Uh, thirteen points of damage, and then you take another thirteen points of acid damage on top of that. Okay. It the, the Hulk itself then opens its jaws and shoots bile at you. I need a dexterity saving throw twenty three. Okay. Um, is it starting its turn now within my spirit guardians? Is this a new creature? Because not it... a new creature. This is the this is one of the hulks. Okay. Because anything that starts its turn also needs to make that. Oh save. no! This is the emissary. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Then yeah. Uh, it needs to make a wisdom saving throw. DC twenty. Okay. Or else. Uh, I, this I have foreseen. <laughs> uh, this is a six. Okay. If that's a failure, it means it takes forty-one radiant damage. Uh, right. And then you wanted a dexterity saving throw, you said? I'm going to say you can see all this, Alindra. You, even though, like, ah. You're still on Storm Herald, correct? Correct. Orkira's just laughing as her, uh, her ball of fire is spinning around and just smacking into these creatures. And it's a little distracted, and so it doesn't dodge at all as I rolled a one. Oh, no. So uh, I, I, get, I get a little wild chaos. magic as I, I, rolled a, I rolled a one. It's a three. Does a three save? No, you take 64 points of acid damage and gibbering mouthers pour out of its mouth at the same time as it sprays this vile liquid on you and you are now surrounded by several gibbering mouthers. Okay, they all need to make wisdom saving throws. <laughs> DC 20. Now, see how long they gibber. <laughs> 
This is just the rest of the game. They fail. How much right. is that? Uh, 38 radiant damage, and their speeds are halved. <laughs> Immediately, these re- these newborn gibbering mouthers, they didn't do nothing to nobody yet. <laughs> just immediately take radiant damage. They were damage. just masses of mouths and teeth. <laughs> hey. Nothing. Nothing to nobody. Don't yuck anyone's young. Yum. Listen, I saw <laughs> all of you while I was on Faerun dealing with all of those Far Realm stuff. I, nothing's, nothing bothers me anymore. Just let me get at the gnomes. Oh, wow. They're like immediately the gibbering mouthers are almost dead as they pour out. Um, we are back at the top. We are on everyone. everyone. Wait, who the heck is Fred? I think, and... I think I was who? Freely, it's you. <laughs> you have reached um, the Margo, asteroid. Th- that was, uh, that was, that was our D&D character. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, having steel wind struck as close to this thing as i could get am i close enough that i can fly in and get to orkira 100 percent. uh are any of those things in a line that she's not in if i were to cast a spell <laughs> you can yell at her like flying up against the wall ah, duck lightning bolt Quack, <laughs> what <laughs> and that's how she died yep <laughs> We'll bring you back. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> That's how Akira died a second time. In what is the save on the dexterity <laughs> saving throw? DC 19. It's a wild mount. It kills me every time. Do I need to make the save? No, you're fine. He told you to get out of the way. Yeah. Uh, That's real 20. I, I would. Oh, I, I rolled. I rolled poorly. Oh, no, I didn't. What'd you get? Uh, it, it's bacon still. Four, oh, only 46. Only 46. Yeah. All the hulks around her explode in the lightning, as well as these freshly birthed gibbering mouthers. They all die in a row. But and I just still this giant star spawn emissary <laughs> there. Hey, welcome. I just I just Not land wrong. right right next to her, right in front of this thing, and I'm like, why do we come to this place? No, just like like why do we come here? Listen, I wasn't gonna say anything because you know how I feel about this, but there was dice. And I'm trying yeah. to be helpful, so here we are. I you mean... know, but I, I'm, the gnome should be grateful, and I just, like, square up and get ready, because um, uh, there's not really... Uh, let me see. Ooh, uh, hold on. Bonus action. Um, I mean, epic I'm... lightning is is enough, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to that's... feel like you didn't do enough. <laughs> as, as I look at you, I'm just like, that's all right. This thing's coming with me, and I hex blades curse on this <laughs> giant star spawn. Uh, and uh, that is it. Okay, perfect. Yep. And you Hexblade's curse the emissary, and now mm-hmm. we are on the third round. What so, happens? Dun, dun, dun. One giant lightning bolt, brimming with colors of the rainbow, splits apart into five different lightning bolts, one of each color of the rainbow, and it, and 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 explodes on basically five creatures. So okay. Each, so uh, they need to make a dexterity saving throw. Or take. Oh. <laughs> uh, you have... <laughs> oh yeah, it doesn't affect. Us. She was on a roll. It's, it, it it doesn't it 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 doesn't do a lot of damage, attack but rolls, it does it. But, it, but it does it very far and wide, though. Like I mean, you can attack. Yeah, this is a massive it, yeah. area. Like the, the, yep. again, all of these like gnomish devices are flying through the air, and and Willow is running around, and they are all being protected from the spell. But just and what is the what is the range of this? It's a good thing to bring up again. Um, it only is going to hit 360 five. feet. Yeah. There yeah. is a war happening. The, the, yep. And all these things are getting pelted by acid, by thunder, by lightning. And just you are murdering everything that is coming out of these holes of this asteroid at the moment. You are like actively saving the day as a giant whale hooked up to Storm Herald. <laughs> oh, just for the record, every one of those things that is um, that didn't save is also deafened. So these are yes, yeah, <laughs> they are also yeah. deafened. So mm-hmm. they are just having a very hard time. Just a lot of what? Yeah, Melfi, what are you doing this turn? Um, does each creature takes ten ten d six? Is that each creature individually? I need to roll for, or do I just give it a once? Just at once. Okay, cool. Then that's 37 points of lightning damage on a failed save. 
half as much on a successful. Um, you are murdering. How how are you murdering? <laughs> they just explode into rainbows. <laughs> Of course. Thars Dune has nothing on Penelope half pint in her <laughs> rainbows. You have made it's the true. chain you've made the chained one very angry. And you you think in somewhere in your mind you hear a chain rattle in the very depths of the universe. <laughs> An anger angry chain. <laughs> <laughs> uh Penelope, do you have any spells you are casting on top of this? No, I think I'm too far away for anything else. Okay, so you're just hanging out as the whale? Yeah. I can, I'll allow you to cast this, another spell through there as long as it's not concentration. Uh, I'll, I won't steal anyone's thunder, you know. I mean, if you are the thunder. <laughs> literally. <laughs> like you, thunder. you literally brought the thunder here. Lightning. It's thunder yeah. and, and thunder. lightning. It's very, very frightening to a bunch of spa- star spawns. Uh, we'll go ahead and check. I mean, uh, main, check your DMs. All right. Do we have any other weird things? No. Nope. Uh, I did roll two 20s, so... Yeah, I think we're still working on that. All uh, right. Oh, it's, it's actually yet. Lindra. Uh, sure. Let's give that uh, the 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 emissary uh, a nice chance at disintegration. So I will point at that emissary that is uh, going after my friend Okira, and I will cast disintegrate as a beam of of sickly green light shoots out of my finger. And I will use Griff to assist my targeting on that. Uh, go ahead and give me a really quick Arcana check. Okay. Because you've dealt with aberration. Like, this thing is massive. 23. You know that this thing can probably dismiss the disintegration. Much in the way okay. that Asmodeus previously had. Okay. So then I will not do that. Um... And for all you know, this type of thing might like it. Yeah. Not here to take shame. No. <laughs> no, just to kill it. But but you do sense like you you uh, know that w- like if it dismisses it, it this thing will not take damage if it so, dismisses it. Um then you know, let's use maze since there's no save on it. We'll put it away until we're ready to deal with it and then bring it back at an opportune uh, location where it is surrounded by impending doom. There is no save for maze? There is no save for maze. Uh it on its turn it can make a DC twenty intelligence check um to try and escape the maze, but it, it is popped elsewhere. Okay. Perfect. So long, farewell. It pops <laughs> away. Uh, Whittle, what are you doing? <laughs> you you have reached the asteroid. Whittle was like re- readying a fireball, and then it just kind of disappears. No, 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 the fireball's still good. It's I just got the one the one big baddie away until we're ready to deal with an isolated enemy. You do okay. see the light of the center, a glowing green line at the, uh, the center of the asteroid now that the giant star spawn emissary is not blocking the way any longer. You see kind of the radiation, a sickly radiance pouring out of it. And as you get closer, you feel that you will keep on taking damage as you see a giant green orb at its center. Some, something crystalline. And you see flesh growing around it, almost like all of these creatures have been growing because of the radiation at the center of this asteroid. I'm going to overchannel a fireball at level five. Okay. Which there's a deck save of 19. Perfect. It is an orb and has no deck save. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's 65 points of damage. Everybody give me a dexterity saving throw as the fireball, how does this explode, this crystalline structure? It suddenly is hit with fire and all of the flesh in this cavern starts to melt immediately and there is a uh, an escalating effect as or- all the fire turns green and starts exploding out of the center of the tunnel. Or Kira has advantage because you're close to me. Um, I was heading towards a couple of gnomes who were trapped in here. Can I, if I 100%. willingly fail the save, can I protect them from this fireball? You can. 
I want to do that. 27. Seven. Um, for my am... dexterity save for the fireball, if yeah. anybody's within 30 feet of me, you get plus four. It's not for the fireball, it's for the crystalline no. structure exploding. Oh, so okay. if you well, don't save, you get 49 points of damage. The DC is 18. If you do save, you do get half. If I'm oh. on Storm Herald, do I need to be making this as well? Absolutely not. 24. Is it, what kind of damage is it? It is radiant. Okay. Just the wrong kind of radiant. The 24 That's is rude. Uh, yeah. Orgira dives in front of these two gnomes saves. Yeah. and blocks them from being hit with this fire or with this radiant damage. And as she then pushes them into Freely's arms, she disintegrates into ash. Uh, what? As that dropped me below zero. But well, my thing that's activated. the way it ends. Right, yep. I need no no, I need well, to know when's you the next... see your did you see your your um Bob Magic Surge too? Because <laughs> that's relevant here as well. Um I, I'm gonna say the that most of you know relevant. that in six seconds it's gonna be fine. It's the <laughs> rule of uh, yeah, you what you see or Kira shelter all of these gnomes that have been captured and she just covers them up with her wings and then she turns burns away into ash at this moment, and you feel the asteroid drop <gasps> did that creature we were fighting um uh get damaged by this it was gone it was it's in maze right now it's in a maze, oh yeah, yeah it's in a maze yeah okay right uh unless it's super smart <laughs> that was will or kira you're dead Briv. No, what well, are you well, doing wait wait oh okay so as uh <laughs> my avatar of destruction means that when i drop to zero hit points or outright killed I'm immediately reduced to ash. At the start of my next turn, which this would be, I'm resurrected in an explosion of fire. Is there any uh, enemies around me? Yeah, you still had a bunch of the star spawn hulks around you. Okay. How much damage uh, does that do? Real quick. They, we're, we're running. Uh, yeah, they need to make constitution saving throws, DC 20. Okay. Um, oh, that was really uh, bad. Rolls. Ugh. Uh, you got four? Okay, I got, uh, well, it's 24, because it's 2d10 plus 20. Uh, so if they fail, they take uh, 24 fire damage and are blinded until the end of my next turn. They only had 16 left. Uh, perfect. So they, they are destroyed, and as I reform with half of my hit points, I look back up at Freely and go, oh, her, um, elevator go down? Uh, you said this thing is dropping, like, Crashing, oh yeah dropping. yeah and will you okay. hear it like the explosion is like systemic like it is like the the whole cavern is exploding like the death star just was destroyed and the emperor was thrown down into it at the same time this is bad super you bad see, whittle's like superhero moment she's walking on one of the gnomes planes and like that scene um from uh batman where like joker's walking away from the hospital and he like look turns around nothing's happening like Oh, <laughs> as the explosions happen <laughs> in repetition. Oh, okay. You, you are I'm... out of combat. You may all start running if you wish to. No, 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 no. I've got, I've got Freely and how many gnomes next to me? Uh, you got about uh, 12 gnomes. I can, <laughs> I, can, I can get eight of them. Great. I'll get the rest. And I cast Word of Recall and I take um, five gnomes with me as I uh, bamf back to Storm Herald. I hit plane shift. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! Please, before before mm. we do that, because that 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 um that emissary is about to come back whenever it gets out of the maze. I would like to to steer Storm Herald up. Penelope, can would you mind and uh, returning to your normal form? <laughs> yeah, what's that? Bisquilots to me, and I basically want to surround the entire tank with all of the Sir Bisquilots. So that when the star spawn emissary appears, it's going straight into a cage and it's surrounded by all of the bisquilots. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, this has gotten very weird. Well, well it's <laughs> about to get weirder if you let me explain what Briv's going to do. Yeah, what is okay, so, Briv, what are you doing? So basically Briv is ignoring like any of that stuff, and he is he is literally flying around on spiral. And he is any of the gnomes that are still like caught up here. He is just like Santa Claus 
just grabbing them in the bag of holding, like just literally just <laughs> chucking gnomes in the bag of holding. No. And then and then at one point he nods to uh he kind of like uh you know reaches down and like whispers uh something to spiral and you see spiral go and get any others that he can get on his back and his claws anything else and so spirals like you know descending down you know saving gnomes and then briv is still on his way down like bagging any that he possibly can and then he is going to just land on the ground and uh just make a crater on the ground and then he is going to and i'm going to use boon of invulnerability and uh to take no damage from that and then he is going to tip the bag up and start just shaking gnomes out whittle what is your final thing that you are doing Oh, I get to do another thing? Yeah, you can do one more thing. Is there anyone to shoot this moat at? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are you are running away from an explosion. I assume you got into Storm Herald. Oh yeah, she's hitching a ride back to Storm Herald. Uh Storm Herald's like connected but now moving away. Yeah, you easily get, get back to Storm Herald. Um and what are you doing? Anything else? That's it. Okay. Until You're next back. episode. And then Looking epic <laughs> as this thing explodes. Yeah, you get back to the, the room. Penelope shape shifts eight for ta oh my god, no. Uh <laughs> wait, for Todd? I don't even know what I that can means. Go for but the I love emissary. It. There you go. Yeah, that <laughs> doesn't it doesn't yeah, okay, right. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll deal with that later. Anyways, so Whittle, yeah, Whittle everyone gets back to the room. And t you got socks full of gnomes. They're very upset with whatever Briv's got going on. Everyone's brought gnomes back. Penelope, you shapeshift away from being a whale. Stormherald moves ever so slightly into the position uh, to where the, the original section that the star spawn was in. And it appears in the vat and is immediately electrocuted as all of these gnomes around Whittle and you realize like how much they kind of look a little bit like Whittle at the same time. All these Serbisalots all do Mind Blast at the same time and all of the Star Spawn just explodes into goo and fills the entire vat and froths out like foam just spilling blood and chunks of eyeballs start rolling around like bowling balls around Storm Herald and you have in the entire asteroid is exploding at this moment. You got to move Storm Herald. Uh, tell me who teleports it away. Freely. Freely. Yeah. <laughs> but you, I don't, I, you, you got know, you got I Millennium Falcon. This. <laughs> yeah, I'm like we don't even get the hot dogs. Fine, no hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you have an entire honeymoon. It's true. You uh, uh you screw here. up and you teleport directly onto Hooper Duke right next to the hot dog <laughs> stand as the asteroid explodes in the sky and there's nothing but green energy and almost like fireworks and all the dust settles. <laughs> and you see Briv in the distance where he's landed on the ground and he just goes, Yes! Huzzah! <laughs> 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 and and do the do, do the residents of Hooper Duke like look at their watches and go, yep, it's that time. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> the whistles blow and everyone starts drinking and running around <laughs> and start and digging into mech fights. <laughs> and you have a wonderful, very long, probably too long party with all the gnomes of Hooper Duke, and they ask to ride on top of Orkira and be <laughs> and be dragon riders. And they write, They want to put electrodes on Briv to see if he can summon storms. And they remark on how Freely is exceptionally tall for a halfling. And uh, they ask Alindra to help them gamble. <laughs> they want Penelope to grow indoor plants <laughs> inside the cave so they can eat lichen. And they ask, <laughs> they ask Willow to do a lot of things since Willow moves so fast. <laughs> They ask well, a, a lot about the technology. So, how do we tell? How do we teleport all of Hooper Duke? Is the question that we have for you. Uh, all you need is like a, a few runes. That's all. <laughs> I, I can get you some. <laughs> Listen, I appreciate so runes. the best so thing would be if Hooper Duke could be outside of Wildmount because then we wouldn't have to come to Wildmount to visit Hooper Duke. That'd be the best. And that is our adventure, everyone. I'm sorry, Matt. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching this. Whatever this was, I had a good time. <laughs> uh, I, for one, am excited about the return of Sir Biswalax. 
Freely's filled with a lot of conflicting emotions because he's supposed to get married, but there's one less vendetta that needs cleaning up these friggin' Bisquilots. You but never left the cage. <laughs> I think everyone that's... is cordially invited to a wedding next week, right? That is true. That will be our finale. That will be our mm -hmm. wedding. Thank you all for tuning in, not just tonight, but on the journey that took us to get here. Thank you to Sirenscape. Thank you to Idol Champions. Thank you to Tailspire. Uh, and of course, if you haven't signed up for your free account on Demiplane, you should. You can play some games with your friends find some friends to play games with take a look at the pathfinder nexus the world of darkness nexus who knows what else is coming next all sorts of dopeness but you got to register first and in the meantime we will see you back here next week for a very very fancy finale thank y'all so much bye-bye